Hello everybody, how are you grade 11s? Today we are going to look at um, slopes and whenever we talk about slopes we talk about the nature of the surface. Is it gentle? Is it steep? Is it concave? Is it convex? With gentle slopes we know that our relief is very low, our gradient is lower and identification of that is usually by contour lines far apart on the maps. Steep slopes are indicated by our scarp slopes where we know that on our contour lines the, con the, the contour lines are very very close together so here I'm going to be starting with the concave slopes the ones that you're not very familiar with this is a concave slope it forms when the upper layer is more resistant to erosion than the lower layer so if the upper layer is more resistant to erosion what then does it mean it means that it is more steeper and as you go to the bottom it becomes more gentler and this is how a concave shape looks like on a contour line on a map work it means the high ground contour lines are close together and as you go down they become spaced apart and that is an indication of a concave slope next is my convex slope. Convex is the opposite of concave. This is what we call a convex slope. Where we have steeper ground on the upper layers there. And as you go down, it becomes more gentler. You can see the contour lines are close together on the upper part. As you go down, they become gentler. This is what we call a convex slope. Now, what are the processes responsible for the formation of slopes? We should know that we have what are called primary slopes, and these ones are formed by folding and faulting. When land moves up or down along a fault line. When land moves down, up and down along a fault line. This forms what we call primary slopes you can see here we have a steeper slope where we have part of the earth crust above the other this is just a picture to show you various slopes that we will be looking at we also have what are called erosional slopes erosional slopes are formed due to internal forces as I said, these internal forces can be folding, which causes parts of the earth to bend. And faulting, where we have cracks within the crust and causes part of the upper crust to, come, to, to move upwards. And then they are shoved by erosion. And then they become what we call erosional slopes. Some slopes at the bottom, they form as a result of depositional processes also now what are the slope elements whenever we look at the slopes we need to identify elements of a slope like when you see a side view of a mountain what elements of a slope do you see you should know that we have one what is called the crest which is the top of the mountain the cliff is also known as the scarp of the free face it is below the crest we also have the talus or the debris slope or the ski slope which is near the base just below the cliff and then at the bottom we have what we call the pediment these are the four to take note of and these are the elements that we're talking of the crest which is on top below the crest is the cliff below the cliff is the talus and as we approach the bottom there we find the pediment and a sharp break, a sharp break within the slopes that separates the talus and the pediment, you should know that it is called a nick point. Now slope. Crest, as it is on top of the mountain, we said it is gentle and convex. It usually has a thin layer of soil. Why? Because with the material, they move down to the crest, to the bottom of the hill. That's characteristics of the crest. So it is the one that is found on top of the mountain. Just below, we said we have the cliff. It is below the crest. 
and it is usually vertical, consists of resistant rocks, and we should also know that loose material moves to the pigment, such as rock falls, they can occur there at the cliff. And the thickness of the cliff is basically determinant about, upon the thickness of resistant rock that determines the cliff. But most of the time, the cliff is very steep. The slopes are uneven because of weathering that is taking place along the joints. So weathering takes place there. That's why we have more of movement of material. Number three, we have the talus slope. It forms due to deposition near the base of the hill. This is when most of the material collects at the talus slope but it forms a uniform angle which is around about 20 to 30 degrees so and then, like i said material from the crest usually collects here at the talus slope that is why it is also called the debris slope because debris falling from the cliff also settles along the talus slope at the bottom we have what we call the pediment this is the bottom of the mountain it is usually concave in shape with an angle of 0 0.5 degrees to 5 degrees or it can be 0 0.5 degrees to 7 degrees depending on the landform. The slope is steeper near the talus but as you go towards the pediment it becomes very, very gentle. Loose material collecting the slope development. How does the slope change with time? We have the climatic factors. What are the climatic factors? High rainfall leads to higher volume of soil being washed away. And with the more soil being washed away, it also affects the development of the slope. Shrinking and expanding of rocks causes the movement of slopes. So as the, we have more and more soil erosion, it also means that the slope also tends to retreat and to develop with time. Another factor is the type of soil. Thin soil is less stable. Saturated soil can cause more mass movement also. So it means that there, is, there are types of soil that can encourage more erosion and this also affects or makes the slope retreat. Vegetation cover. Less vegetation cover of soil makes the slope erode faster because no, there are no plants or roots that can keep the soil together. So if there's less vegetation, then there will be increase in erosion of the slope. So the slope also retreats as, as well. Human factors, deforestation, when we remove trees, we decrease, we increase slope development because there is increase in erosion. The building infrastructure decreases the stability of a slope. Development on a steep slope also destabilizes the slope. Vibrations of traffic can also cause slopes to destabilize. Overgrazing and poor farming methods can also increase erosion and also increase the retreating of the scalp. So in every, also the rock type of rocks, rocks with good resistance to erosion, they erode slower. So if they erode slower, it means that there is a stability of that particular slope. Rocks with low resistance to erosion will cause more slope movement and more slope development. Now, whenever we look at slope development, we need to make sure that we also look at the theories of slope retreat theories of slope retreat we always talk about lc king with his theory of slope retreat this theory was based on south african landscapes looking at the karu landscapes in south africa it is more applicable to semi-arid and arid regions and what does it say it says the angle of the slope does not change element of the slope remains the same slope erodes parallel to itself lower part of the slope is concave and the pediment will widen this is what we are talking about the height remains the same so what happens is that there is always continuous erosion especially on the cliff the height of the slope is maintained the height of the slope is maintained but then 
it retreats backwards through what we call this is what we call slope retreat or parallel retreat the previous position of the slope is the one that changes with erosion with time so this is the theory by Elsie King of slope retreat we also have the theory by W.M. Davis about slope decline here he was looking at um, slopes within the humid areas so he says in the beginning slopes are always steep and slopes will change over time how does it change over time that's what he talked about the slope decline that the slope angle decreases with increase with erosion within a particular time and steep slopes will become gentler slopes hence the term slope decline so we have the steep slopes with the time these steep slopes and with erosion taking place they will become gentler slopes so that is the slope decline the steepness of the slope reduces and it reduces to become more gentler with time as a result of increase in erosion within that particular area so that was the um video of slopes i hope you enjoyed yourselves grade 11s those who are new subscribe to my channel share the share the video with your friends and have a good day see you in my next video bye